Are you still not giving up? If Tupac Shakur ever asked fans this question, the answer was unequivocal and meant only yes. He inspired his listeners so much that they still adhere to conspiracy theories around the mysterious death of the rapper 20 years after his still unsolved murder. On September 7th, 1996, Tupac Shakur was shot in Las Vegas and died six days later. In the last months before his death, the artist's life included making music, filming, activism, romantic relationships, and plans for the future away from the Death Row Records group. So what did happen then? And do we have any reason to believe that the rapper staged his own death? Biographer Express is with you, and today we will talk about the mysterious murder of a talented musician. Tupac was not only a rapper, he could have a wonderful acting future that opened up new horizons for him. In a promotional interview for Gang Related, he said, I could be the best actor anybody's ever seen given the chance, the opportunity, and the experience and the lessons from people. I could be the best, but right now I don't even wish to be the best. I just want to be one of them. Throughout his life, Tupac wanted to help his community and create more opportunities for black youth. One of the organizations he supported was A Place Called Home, which offered dance lessons, counseling, tutoring, and medical services to at-risk youth in Los Angeles. He also engaged in political activities. On August 15th, less than a month before his death, Tupac spoke at a rally with Brotherhood Crusade, a group of black activists to protest the Three Strikes Law and equal conditions for admission to higher education in California. It is worth noting that the last years of his life were not without scandals. In the fall of 1995, Tupac was behind bars appealing a sentence for sexual assault, although he always claimed that he was innocent. He didn't have the money for bail, but Death Row Records offered to provide the funds. After that, Tupac signed a contract with the label to release three albums. After his release from prison in October 1995, Tupac returned to California and began recording music for Death Row. In August 1996, his album, The Don Kilimanati, The Seven Day Theory, was recorded. The album, recorded under the pseudonym of Tupac Machiavelli, became a number one hit and was released virtually immediately after his death. The musician's time in death row also included confrontation and controversy. In his song Hit Em Up, which was released in June 1996, Tupac stated that he slept with Faith Evans, the wife of Christopher Biggie Smalls Wallace, also known as the Notorious B.I.G. In addition, there were direct threats and insults in the track, as well as hidden hints of competition with the East Coast. The press called it the War of the Coasts, but it was not only a war of labels, but also Shakur with B.I.G. Do not forget that Wallace and Tupac were once friends, but after Tupac was attacked in 1994, he began to believe that Wallace was involved in this incident. Evans denied the affair, but that didn't stop Tupac from taunting Wallace with these accusations at the MTV Awards ceremony on September 4, 1996. The threats between the rappers and their labels, Death Row and Bad Boy Entertainment, escalated into a series of assaults and shootings, one of which resulted in the killing of a Death Row bodyguard in Atlanta in 1995. On September 7, 1996, Tupac, along with Suya Knight, who was the CEO of Death Row Records, arrived in a black BMW in Las Vegas for a boxing event between Mike Tyson, with whom the rapper was friends, and Bruce Seldon. After the fight, which ended with Mike's expected victory, on the way to the 662 Club, Shakur's car, driven by Knight, was fired at by unknown people from a white Cadillac car. We heard shots and looked to the right of us, Knight said. Tupac was trying to get in the back seat and I grabbed him and pulled him down. The gunshots kept coming. One hit my head. The shooter from this car fired about 13 shots, hitting Tupac four times, after which the Cadillac drove away. Knight, who had a head injury, tried to regain control of his car, but two tires deflated and he couldn't leave the scene. Soon, police and ambulance officers arrived at the scene of the tragedy. Everyone was asked to get out of the cars that were in the vicinity of the incident, and Knight, bleeding from a head wound, was made by the police to lie face down on the sidewalk. In 2014, a retired Las Vegas police officer claimed that Tupac told him, F*** you, when he asked who shot him. According to other sources, Tupac's last words were, I can't breathe, and I'm dying, man. On the fateful day, the artist was taken to the hospital where he underwent several operations. His right lung was removed, and all this time his life was supported by a ventilator. Tupac, who was unconscious, was resuscitated until his mother ordered hospital staff not to do it again. As a result, 
He died on September 13, 1996, six days after he was shot. Theories about the shooting included revenge by a street gang called the Crips, the organization of the murder by Wallace, or Knight's desire to prevent Tupac from leaving Death Row Records, but everyone denied any involvement in it. The truth about the murder of Tupac has not been revealed so far, but let's consider the main theories that may be not only an assumption, but also reality. Machiavelli's staging is perhaps the most common theory that emerged after Shakur's death. Conspiracy theorists explain this by the fact that Shakur respected the political philosopher Niccolò Machiavelli, whose treatise, The Art of War, was interpreted as propaganda for staging death in order to manipulate the enemy. In fact, Machiavelli wrote, Sometimes it has been of great moment while the fight is going on to disseminate words that pronounce the enemy's captain to be dead, or to have been conquered by another part of the army. Many times this has given victory to him who used it. But considering that Machiavelli supported the staging of his death, fans believe that Shakur's assuming of a stage name and the inclusion of the phrase Exit Tupac, Enter Machiavelli in the cover of the album The Don Kiluminati, The Seven Day Theory were all deliberate hints left by the artist. In Richie Rich's song Inwards Done Change, he was rapping, I've been shot and murdered. Can't tell you how it happened word for word, but best believe that Inward's gonna get what they deserve. In another song called Life of an Outlaw, he hints that sooner or later he will fly away for the sake of street fame. On the album cover, the rapper was depicted in the image of Jesus Christ, allegedly playing with the theme of death and rebirth. The album itself was written in seven days, and on September 7th, Shakur was shot dead in a BMW 7 Series car. In addition, Tupac died exactly seven months after the release of the album, All Eyes on Me. Fans found similar hints in the lyrics of songs. For example, in the single Hail Mary, in the story, Tupac literally rose from the grave to deal with his enemies. In another composition, Ain't Hard to Find, the artist said in plain text that the rumors about his death were fiction. Also, many fans believe that Tupac was killed by the FBI in an attempt to put an end to the so-called violent rap culture in the midst of the infamous war of the West Coast against the East One. This was what the artist gradually realized and therefore sent fans hints. Some suggested that Shakur was tired of the bloodshed that accompanied rap beef and longed to escape, hiding in Cuba with his aunt, Asada Shakur. Asada was an active member of the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense, which sought political asylum in Cuba in the early 80s after escaping from prison in New Jersey, after being sentenced for murder, which caused heated controversy. Let's talk about the fact that there are no accidents. Many believe that Suge Knight and his then-lawyer, David Kenner, are connected with Tupac's death. This is exactly what the following theory says. Tupac Shakur was becoming a very outstanding actor, and it came to Suge Knight's attention that Tupac was going to leave Death Row Records. And the evidence shows you just don't leave Death Row Records and get away with it. Los Angeles police detective Russell Poole said, who worked closely with author Randall Sullivan on Labyrinth, a revealing study of the involvement of the Los Angeles police to the head of the Death Row Records label. The authors of Labyrinth also found that Shakur fired Kenner shortly before his death and was going to launch his own label under his stage name Machiavelli. In addition, in 1996, he created his own production company, Euthanasia, having big plans for the film industry. Fans also noticed that Tupac's post-humorous album did not mention his manager among the project participants. This would deprive Knight of the opportunity to profit from the musician's work. But Knight was also in the car with Shakur on the night of the shooting, you will reasonably notice. Sullivan will have an answer to that. If you look at the police report, the shooter's car pulled up and shot at an angle that could really only hit Tupac. No shot really came close to hitting Suga. Snoop Dogg and Tupac's bodyguard were sure that Knight was involved in the murder, who previously decided who and where to get in the car. Suspicion was also added by the fact that there was no bulletproof vest on the rapper, which he usually wore. Another candidate for the role of the killer was the street group Crips, which acted on the orders of Notorious B.I.G. There was a theory that he even gave the mercenaries his gun and paid them a million dollars. He didn't just want Shakur dead. He wanted the satisfaction of knowing the fatal bullet came from his gun. It was written about it in the LA Times investigation. In March 1997, Wallace discussed his feud with Shakur during an interview with a San Francisco radio station. Asking whether he had a role in the rapper's death, Wallace said he wasn't that powerful yet. B.I.G.'s involvement hasn't been proven. Already half a year after Shakur's death, he was also shot in a car, by the order of the same night. 
It was also rumored that the Crips shot the rapper on their own. This was due to the fact that Shakur was affiliated with the Bloods, a street gang that often fought with the Crips. Since a few hours earlier, Tupac, along with bodyguards from Bloods, beat up Crips member Orlando Anderson in the lobby of Mike Tyson's Fight Avenue. In 2002, a Los Angeles Times investigation was published, where it was claimed that Anderson had made a deal with his comrades to take revenge on Tupac. What do you think? Who was to blame for what happened? Share your opinion in the comments. Suga Knight, the mysterious owner of the Death Row Records label, claimed to have paid $3 million for Tupac's cremation the day after his death. In addition, Knight admitted to the TMZ tabloid that no one saw Tupac dead. The cremator indicated that Tupac was 6 feet tall and weighed about 183 pounds, but his driver's license stated that he was 5 feet 10 inches tall and weighed 172 pounds. The planned memorial service for the rapper was cancelled at the last minute, and the executive director never saw the person who was engaged in cremation again. Later, Suga said, The person who supposedly cremated Tupac, this guy, got about three million personally from me. The next thing I know, I never heard from the guy or seen him again. He retired and left. Maybe the question is Pac's not really dead, Pac's somewhere else. By the way, this is another interesting fact as a bonus. After the murder of Tupac, his posthumous track Black Jesus was released. Recorded together with Outlaws there, he said, Cremated, last wishes, inward smoke my ashes. In an interview with XXL Young Noble, one of the Outlaws participants said, We rolled up good quality joints of California pot, sprinkled them with our big homie, and guess what? Now he's in our blood forever. However, later EDI, Mean admitted in an interview that they soon discovered that there was no dust in their joints. Rumors that the rapper survived were fueled by his bodyguard Michael Nice, who in an interview with the Daily Star said Tupac was really seriously injured but survived. According to Nice, Tupac was transported first to Barbados and then to Cuba. A video from a party in Cuba where Tupac allegedly danced with Rihanna also added fuel to the fire. To the disappointment of fans, it turned out to be fake. In an interview with TV host Steve Harvey, Shakur's friend Snoop Dogg called the statement a good TV and said, My sidekick rests in peace. I know many people want him back because his fans love him and the legacy itself outweighs all the arguments of reason. But understand, if the Almighty takes, then he takes home. Well, until we get to the part about the rapper's legacy, we suggest you click the subscribe button and the bell to learn even more stories about celebrities. Subscribe, and we continue. In 1997, Tupac's mother, Afini, created a family foundation, the Tupac Amaru Shakur Foundation, to preserve her son's legacy. The foundation's mission is to provide social support to students who seek to improve their creative skills. By 2008, according to Forbes magazine, Shakur's fortune was estimated at $15 million, making him one of the richest posthumously earning artists in the world. Shakur has received widespread recognition among other hip-hop artists, including from Eminem, who in 2008 wrote an open letter to Tupac's mother thanking Afini Shakur for her son. You have no idea how much your son and his music has inspired not only the hip-hop world, but, speaking for myself, has inspired my whole career. He was, and still is, the true definition of a soldier. Of course, all fans would like Tupac to live a long and happy life, or at least the theory about the staging of his death would be true, but these are just guesses. Nevertheless, the artist was still able to return to the big stage. Naturally, you will think that this is impossible, but the late rapper performed at the 2012 Coachella Festival thanks to modern technology. The organizers used a hologram. The initiator of such a concert was Dr. Dre, and the hologram was made by Digital Domain, which took four months to recreate the figure of the rapper, and it allegedly cost $400,000. For what? It was in order to please the fans. Well, and to fuel new rumors that Shakur can really hide and live a new life somewhere in a parallel reality. Tupac, unfortunately, wasn't the only performer who passed away early enough. John Lennon, who was a legend of rock music, also died in the prime of his life. Moreover, the murder weapon was also a firearm. But could it have been prevented? Click on the icon that appeared on your screen to find out how the artist spent the last years of his life and who was actually responsible for his death. Follow the link and you will find out everything. We will be grateful if you like this video. Biographer Express was with you. See you again.